Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Let's find the derivative of this complicated function. So if you look at this function, if we are doing it the usual way, then we are going to have to deal with the product rule, we have to deal with the quotient rule, we have to deal with the uh, the general power rule, and then there are a lot of different things, and there are, there is a lot of uh, uh, different things that we need to worry about, right? And then of course there was also the chain rule. And so what we're going to do here is that we are going to use a method that's called a logarithmic differentiation. Um, the reason for why we want to do that is really because that will actually allow us to turn products and quotients into sums and differences. So in this case, then if we do that, then it's actually easier because when we differentiate something, we can differentiate term by term. So if you just turn a product, that requires product rule into a sum, then you do not need to use the product rule anymore. So that would be something that's nice to do. So what we are going to do first is that we are going to rewrite a function so that now it looks like this. It's y, right? So instead of using f of x, because that notation is hard to work with, so we are going to just use y here. And then we are going to rewrite this function as e to the 4x, and then we have 5x squared plus 1 to the second power. And then um, for the denominator, we should actually, instead of writing the, uh, the square root, we should just turn it into a power form. So we get 3x squared because we are going to use the power rule. Well, actually, we don't need to, right? We can bring down the power by using a log property. So that will be raised to the 1 half power. Okay, so that's our first step. This is really just changing the look. We're not doing any operations at all to this function. Okay, so now what we're going to do on both sides of this equation is that we are going to uh, take the natural log of both sides of the equation. So what that means is that we have um, we have ln, right? We have ln of y. Okay, and then we also have the ln on the other side. So we have ln of all this stuff, right? So the y is inside the ln. This is not multiplication here, okay? So we are actually doing function composition. So we have ln of all that stuff, right? It's not ln times all that stuff. All that stuff is actually being plugged into the ln function. So we are actually getting e to the 4 x, I mean, e to the 4 x here, and then 5x squared plus 1 square. And then in the denominator, we have also that square root function. So, so now we have this. What should we do next? What should we do next? We are going to, we are going to expand this log. We are going to expand this log. How do we expand it? We are going to write it as, okay, ln of e to the 4x. Okay, and then plus, because that's the product right here. So it's going to be ln of phi x squared plus 1 to the second power. And then now, because we're dividing by this 3x squared minus x plus 4 to the 1 half, then we have minus ln of um, 3x squared minus x plus 4 to the 1 half. Okay, so um, you may say, we should we differentiate now? There is one more step that we should do because there is still a chain rule that's involved. Um, we still need to use a chain rule even if we do after the step, right? But but it's actually just going to make, make that easier. So what we are having on the left side of the equation is still just the L and the Y. And then what about the right-hand side? Right-hand side is that for each law function, um, there is a log property that says that there is the uh, this exponent right here. We can actually bring it to the front so that it will become just a coefficient of the ln function. So now if you bring this 4x to the front, then you're actually going to be getting 4x times ln of e. Okay, plus, and then now you can bring the 2 to the front. Okay, so it's really just all this stuff. All right, that's being brought to the front. So now what do we get here? We get two times ln of phi x squared plus one. 
and then minus 1 over 2 ln of 3x squared minus x plus 4. So as you can see here, if we differentiate this, let's say differentiate this function, we still need to, um, the ch chain rule is still not trivial because we still need to differentiate the ln, and then we also need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, right? But it's actually going to be better because now we do not need to worry about this power because if we have the power right here, when you differentiate the outer function, which is the ln function, and then you differentiate that, and then you need to differentiate the inner function, and then you need to apply the general power rule. So that actually makes that process simpler. And by the way, this ln of e is actually just equal to one, right? So you can replace it, you can replace it by a one. And we actually don't need to worry about it anymore because it's four x times one, which is just four x. Now it's actually time to take the derivative of the function, we got to use implicit differentiation here. We are going to assume that y is a function of x. Actually, it is, right, as you can see here. So when we differentiate this whole equation here, we are going to take the derivative of ln of y and then multiply by the derivative of the inside of the ln function. So what are we getting here? We are getting um, 1 over y, right, and then times y prime, which is the derivative of y. And then now, when you differentiate the right-hand side, the 4x, we get 4. And then plus, now take the derivative of this. We don't need to worry about the constant. We can just put it in the front. So we get um, <clears throat> 1 over. And then we have the 5x squared plus 1, right? Because we are differentiating the outer function, the ln function, and then times the derivative of the inner function, which is 10x. We okay, continue, one over two, and then now same thing here, we gotta differentiate this ln function with that argument, right? So it's going to be one over three x squared minus x plus four, and then times now, times what? 6x minus 1, the derivative of the inner function. But don't forget that you need a pair of parentheses right here. Yeah. Yeah, so don't forget this pair of parentheses. Because whenever you have more than one term, then you will need that pair of parentheses. Like we didn't do that here because we only have one term, but that there are two terms right here, we'll need to uh, distribute both. I mean, we will need to distribute the fraction right to both terms okay so right now we can actually just write down the final answer how do we write it we can actually clean up the answer at the same time so remember we're finding the derivative so we're solving for y prime so we have y prime right here and that's equal to now the y is you got to multiply the y to the right hand side of this equation and what is the y why is this whole thing so we can replace the y by this whole thing here so it's going to be e to the 4x, and then 5x squared plus 1 squared. We are just copying that function. At the bottom, we are going to be getting 3x squared minus x plus 4 to the 1 half. Now, this y is being multiplied to the whole right-hand side, right? So now this right-hand side stuff is the 4 here, and then plus... 20x over five x squared plus one. That's the denominator. I put the two and the ten x together, right? Then here, more stuff, minus the six x minus one. In the denominator, we have 2 and then 3x squared minus x plus 4. And then let's just do a quick check. We have the y here, and then there was the 4. There was a 2 times 10. It's 10x, 5x squared plus 1, okay, minus. The 2 is at the bottom, that original denominator, right? And then there was the 6x minus 1 at the top, right? <clears throat> Okay, so I don't think we're missing anything. Everything is good. So that's the final answer. If you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and share my videos to others.
It will give me support to make more videos. If you have questions or have a topic that you want me to talk about, please leave me a comment. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you.